Steve, what a night. <laughs> Ultimately, exciting cup tie, you must be yeah, so pleased. I mean, um, I suppose really when you look at it, it was a proper cup tie in the end, wasn't it? You know, I mean, they, I, I thought probably if you look at the 90 minutes, I think that they were better than us. Um, I thought that the last 30 minutes, we were probably better than them. Um, I've, I've said to the lads with how hard that we've trained through pre-season, that I felt in games certainly early on, from 70 to 90, we would be strong. We looked like we would have good legs in the in games, and we've we've shown that even in pre-season. So um, that was important. I mean, when we had the little break in play, I just sort of said, you know, that we need we need to get a goal. And when we get a goal, let's see how they'll defend us. Um, we're disappointed with the goals that we conceded tonight. Um, Aaron Pierre should never get beaten in the air. Um, in this league because he's that strong in the air so he, he just said that he was disappointed with that that was a good thing you know and, and Marco feels as though he should have saved the shot um, before that though we should have got a block in but the good thing about it we've got honest lads who've put their hands up before before I'd even said anything really so you know full marks to them full marks to the squad tonight for for the part they've played in the game because it you know a team doesn't win anything but the squad will always Win you something whenever you do win something. So that that enables to get through, get through the game tonight. And it was a tough game, you know. Lincoln, you know, they're well established. You know, I know that there's a few changes in their squad, but you know they they're well established now, and um, and they're a good team. And what a night for for Daniel Ludo coming off the bench and yeah. scoring a couple of very good goals. Yeah, well, I mean, he he ended up um, finishing the game on Saturday, and um, and. Uh, I thought that because he'd had the, the 90, we would start again with Ryan and put Raquel up front with him, who I thought done very well tonight as well. So that's always um, that's always a bonus, you know, when your strikers score. I prefer that all the time with the strikers scoring. Um, but yeah, a couple of a couple of great finishes by Dan. I, I, whilst the second one is is a really good goal, I like the first one for Dan. You know, the scruffy goal where he was there first. That those are the goals that I want Dan Udo to score. So I'm really pleased for him. He's a, he's a, he's a fantastic lad. And um, and also, you know, I know Charlie Caton did go on tonight, but the two young strikers are on the bench tonight and, and Tom coming on and, you know, scoring the penalty. And, you yeah, know, that, uh, that, that was fantastic for him. Always exciting, aren't they? Penalty shootout, especially yeah. when they go the way of your team. Well, that's the way. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, when the penalty shootout goes your way, yeah, then everything's okay. Had we lost the penalty shootout tonight, you almost think, well, what's the point of coming back from 2-0 down? But um, we showed good courage to come back from it and we showed good team spirit and good character. But I was also disappointed that we ended up getting 2-0 down, that we needed to show that because we could have perhaps shown that early on. You know, when we pass the ball, we can pass the ball well. We can pass it well. And... Um, We've got to start trying to do that. But it's a new team developing. Um, and of course, this year, everything's difficult for them, you know, because they're, they've got to try and please a manager that's hard to please. You mentioned Tom Bloxham stepping up to, to score the penalty. That's a special moment, isn't it, for, for a young Massive forward. moment for him. I mean, the lads are, you know, chuffed the bits for him, really. You know, he's, he's a great lad, him and Charlie. You know, there are, you you very rarely get young strikers coming through in your in your football club, you know, and uh, and those two are, you know, they're great to have. They're great lads. Both have missed a chunk of pre-season because they've had to, you know, miss it because they're too young to have injections and picked up positive tests or been in the car with someone who's been positive and had to isolate. So, you know, um, bless them. But they're 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 lovely kids. They really really are. Big news coming out of the football club this afternoon, the sale of uh, Ollie Norburn to, yeah. to Peterborough United. Yeah. What, what's your thoughts on this, Steve? Um, it was a great deal for the football club. When you think that Ollie had 10 months left on his, um, on his, uh, on his contract and um, I spoke to him at the end of last season. I did say to you the other day, I think that that chat needs to remain private. It has done and it's resulted in Ollie um, getting a move, so yeah, we're we're pleased for him, but we're pleased for the pleased for the football club with the deal we got. The deal we I think is uh, first class. We're really really happy with that.
It's another player out of the football club. Yeah. Uh, are you close to, to bringing in reinforcements at the moment? Watch his space. Watch his space. <laughs> so things might be happening ahead of the weekend potentially? Maybe. Okay. You're going to say no more on this? I can tell. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ollie Norburn replaced as captain by Ethan Ebanks Landell. Yeah. He wasn't involved uh, tonight. What's yeah. The, what's the situation with Ethan? Well, unfortunately, Ethan tested positive. Um, for COVID, so you know, there's no point in us, you know, skirting around the edges. That's that's where it is. So you know, he has to do a 10-day isolation period. So we're um, we're disappointed with that, but I, I don't know what else we can do really. So so we won't we won't see him for a while. But um, I mean, he was okay yesterday. He, he was okay, but um, we couldn't allow him in the building the minute he tested. So. Uh, we just have to get on with it, really. There's not a lot we can do. <clears throat> Best wishes to Ethan. Yeah, no, of course. I, th I think he's OK at the moment. I mean, I haven't spoken to him today, but by the end of the week, I certainly will be speaking to him. We just need to see how he feels after probably four or five days of it. I think I think he's OK. You know, certainly when I spoke to him yesterday, all, all he talked about was a sore throat. But I've got one of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's only a couple of guesses why I've got one, but... I need to try and get rid of that quickly. And he gave Elliot Bennett the armband. Uh, uh, well, Elliot's the vice know. captain anyway, so, you know, when Ethan's not there, Elliot will be captain. And when Elliot's not there, we don't quite know who will be captain at the moment, so we'll have to work that one out as we go along. And in terms of this competition, you're into the second round, yeah. Well, there'll be some Premier League clubs in yeah, there. I'm pleased, one of those? I'm pleased. Yeah, absolutely, we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. Absolutely. We want, we want one of those games, you know, it's not. Um, it's uh, it's not uh, it's not a bad thing, and in and in the first week of the season, what ideally what you like is you like your first goal, um, your first win, and your first clean sheet. So we've not got the clean sheet, but before tonight we didn't have our first goal and we didn't have our first win. So we got two out of three, and now we look forward to the game at Morecambe on Saturday. Well done today, thanks, Dave. Pleasure, thank you.